our old buddy Mike Frankel of SNJ today, get his thoughts on the winter sports season. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, guys. How are we doing today? Uh, Josh and I were just joking. We're, we're both uh, don't have kids, so we were just kind of joking. You know, hey, if we ever want to have kids, adopt them when they're about 10 years old and not wake it up at, at 4 or 5 in the morning. Yeah, well, that's the hard part, I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah, I don't know what sleep is anymore. I mean, it just seems like sort of a broken cycle of getting up every couple hours to tuck people in. But, you know, I, you know what I call it? Just living the dreams. <laughs> How are the little guys, man? Everybody's doing well. Uh, we have, uh, you know, survived uh, winter sports season. It's been busy, no doubt. And, uh, Dad's been in and out of the house uh, quite a bit, as you know, uh, covering all these value schemes and stuff. But certainly winding down now. And uh, it's been a fun winter sports season, though. A lot of a lot of big storylines, obviously, that I'm sure you guys have been uh, been talking about over the last couple weeks here. What, Mike, what are some of the ones that, that really jump out at you? Well, I think fresh in my mind, it has to be obviously the, the Ocean City girls basketball team. And I know they lost last night uh, to Ewing in the state semifinals. But, you know, one run for the Ocean City Red Raiders, and especially in that South Jersey Group 3 championship game win over Mainland, like, you know, the Mustangs were undefeated having this, this outstanding season. They had already beaten Ocean City three times uh, in overtime all three times, including the Cape Atlantic League championship game. And, you know, for Ocean City going back even further, they they weren't even supposed to, to contend this year. I mean, they graduated a lot of key talent, uh, new girls stepping up into new roles. So, uh, obviously, that's one of the moments that stands out, Ocean City knocking off mainland in that South Jersey championship game and, you know, emerging as the Cape Atlantic League's uh, really only South Jersey champion, boys or girls. Yeah, it was funny. A couple weeks ago, I, I was kind of uh, looking back through through the past couple of seasons and because uh, I know Ocean City had lost three in a row there in the middle of January, and I was like, that seems kind of rare. And then I, I looked back at the stats, and that's the they've had one losing streak in four years, and that was it, three games in a row. Every time, any other time they've lost, it's either been followed up by a win or the final game of the season. So, kind of gives you an idea of how good a coach Paul Baruffi is to to take whatever talent he has and and whatever kids uh, come out for the team there and just mold them into winners. And I mean, any coach will tell you that's amazing to go four years and have one losing streak. Yeah, no doubt about it. I'm sure uh, a lot of coaches, a lot of programs are pretty envious of that, uh, you know, in terms of being able to bounce back and not following a loss with another loss. But you're right. I mean, he's just done an incredible job, and, you know, kudos to those girls, too. I mean, you're talking about a starting lineup this year that, for the most part, uh, were girls either coming off of the bench, rotation players last year, or even deeper on the bench, not really seeing a lot of playing time. So they had to get up to speed quickly and you know, sometimes there could be bumps in the road with things like that, and you mentioned that losing streak. Um, but, yeah, they, you know, they won those games when it really mattered. And, you know, it's, it's, it's tough, too, for Mainland because, you know, they're, they're part of the story, too, obviously, and, and just an outstanding season for the Mustangs and, and Kylie Watson in that group and their Cape Atlantic League champs, and certainly no one could take that away. And, uh, you know, I think based on what happened this year, I think those two teams are, uh, as they have been over the last couple of years, set up to do battle. Uh, a couple more years down the line here, and there should be some good games moving forward between those two. Definitely. I mean, uh, Mainland with 28-1, and one, that their only loss came to Ocean City in the South Jersey Group 3 championship game. And, Mike, wh- one thing that I, I just kind of was thinking about the other day was, you know, you and I do this do this for a living, so it's, it's no big deal for us to conduct interviews on a daily basis, but it, it always just strikes me, in this day and age, you know, back when I was in high school, I would have clammed up and wouldn't even be able to get a word out to if a reporter ever interviewed me. Th- thankfully, our, our team wasn't good enough to get much coverage. So. <laughs> but uh, just just the way just the way these kids handle themselves with the media. I mean, you're talking about uh, even after losses, you know, final game of the season where they lose a game they they really wanted to win, or or in the case of individual wrestling tournaments. I mean, Tim Fitzpatrick, you know, really wanted to get third. He, he ends up finishing fourth, loses that that bout in a 3-4 placing bout, and, you know, here, here's a crushing loss to a, a an 18-year-old kid, a 17-, 18-year-old kid, and, you know, after a couple minutes to gather himself, he steps right up to the microphone and always oh, a class act, that kid, but it, it's it's just amazing to be that age and to be able to handle yourself uh, as well as they do, some of these young athletes. It's, it's always something that I find really impressive. Yeah, no doubt about it, especially when you're talking about, you know, seniors that have really just played – uh, their last game or, you know, wrestled their last match. And it can be tough. There's certainly a finality to it. And I know, you know, when you're an athlete and you're sort of caught up in the moment, you're not necessarily thinking about the end and, until it happens, right? And, 
and it can be you know it can be tough to kind of turn around and, and face the music and, and talk about what just happened, especially if it's a loss. But, you know, that's just it speaks to a lot of the character of these kids in the area. And, you know, high school sports athletes in general, I think, you know, in a, in a broader sense, it, it sort of builds that character. You know, sometimes it reveals it, too. And there are some, you know, some kids that can trend the other way. But for the most part, you're right. Certainly a lot of the kids around here, you know, even in defeat, you know, very, very graceful, very mature, very poised in, in handling it. So it, it's tough. I mean, again, you're talking about especially, you know, some of the older kids, 17, 18 years old having played their last game, it can be a challenge. You know, I think back to my high school days too, and it's it's a struggle sometimes when that ride comes to an end. But, yeah, you're right, to turn around and just to be able to talk about it at least a little bit. Um, you know, and, and even at that moment sort of appreciate, you know, the bigger picture. Yeah, you know, maybe your season or your high school career ended with a loss, but, you know, a lot of great things were accomplished up until that point. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, wrestling season, you talked about Fitzpatrick there, heck of a run at Boardwalk Hall over in Atlantic City last week. And, you know, St. Augustine had a couple kids on a nice run, too. You know, EHT had a place winner. Uh, you know, certainly a little bit outside the Cape Atlantic League. Uh, Dixie had another tremendous run, and a state, state champion, a state runner-up. So, yeah, a lot of great talent continuing to come out of South Jersey, no doubt about it. Yeah, I don't know if it, it, it has to do with – today's media culture and these kids just seeing interview after interview on sports center and that kind of thing but um it just seems to me like even from five six years ago these kids just seem so much more aware of uh speaking with the media and how they should handle themselves what kind of things they should say and it, it's just mind-boggling to me that a, a teenage kid can be that thoughtful a- after games and and it particularly losses yeah you're right i mean uh, it, it is probably the, the world we live in in terms of, you know, the constant coverage, if you will. And, you know, these kids are they're on social media, so they're you know constantly putting themselves out there uh, via those sources as well. But, yeah, you're right. It's a little bit different animal when you have to, you know, talk to a group of reporters or a reporter or two after a loss. And, yeah, again, I mean, I continue to be impressed with, with a lot of the, the way these kids have handled themselves. And, Look, again, that's the nature of the beast, too, in high school sports. You know, it, especially in a sport like basketball, where literally there is only one team in the entire state of New Jersey that ends the season with a win, with the advent of the Tournament of Champions. So, you know, even if you win a state championship, eventually, odds are, you're going to lose that, that final game. So, yeah, it's tough. I mean, and that's the reality, I think, for a lot of teams. Um, and, and also, you know, credit the coaches, too, to, to sort of get these kids here and say, hey, you know, we're going to win with class, and also, you know, if we lose, we're going to do that with class too. And that, again, that's just a bigger picture high school sports stuff and sports in general. You know, you you can't really let let wins go to your head, and you can't get too low after losses because at the end of the day, yeah, you pour your heart and soul to it, but it's just a game, and and life certainly moves on. Talk with Mike Frankel of SNJ today, and and Mike, uh, one thing that that struck me on, on social media, uh, I I saw a young athlete post. Uh, you know, you see a lot of these. Uh, things on Twitter where football players and basketball players getting offers and, you know, hey, uh, I'm thankful to receive this offer from the, from here or wherever. And um, one, one kid kind of made mention that, hey, a lot more colleges are spending a lot more time in South Jersey. And, and it's neat to see that these kids now have a, a sense of pride for their not only their school and their town, but their entire area. These kids spend a lot of time playing alongside each other in, in travel teams and, and that kind of thing. So they get to know kids from all throughout South Jersey and there's it just seems like there's a lot of pride in South Jersey. Like, hey, we have, you know, we're, we're constantly being compared to North Jersey and all the talent they have up there. But these kids around here are kind of saying, hey, come look at us, too. We got some pretty good athletes in South Jersey. So it's kind of a, a neat little phenomenon going on where everybody's taking pride in, in South Jersey. Even if it's a rival throughout the season, they want to see that team or that player succeed in their postseasons. Yeah, you're right about that, and that maybe is a change from, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, and, and especially social media helps because, you know, these kids can kind of keep up with uh, what's going on with with players that they may know on other teams or for other schools, or whereas maybe in the past they, they wouldn't quite be as tuned in to, to that recruiting news or that news during the season. But, yeah, you're right, and that is – it's fun to see. I mean, you, we cover these kids on the field, and, 
you know, or on the court or on the mat, and the competition is is fierce. But then, you know, you talk about after the game or after the match, and, you know, a lot of these kids are friends, having played, you know, AAU circuits together, or traveling teams, or, you know, various, you know, local teams together, and then they move on to different high schools. But it is fun to see some of the athletes, especially, you know, the top athletes in South Jersey, kind of root for one another. And, you know, I think success breeds success is the old cliche, right? So, you know, maybe player A at, at you know, at school A uh, is doing well. And, and because that player is doing so well at that school, you know, he gets some looks. But maybe when they play player B at school B, that, that, that kid and that school starts to get some looks too. It sort of, it, it blossoms from there. So, yeah, it's, it's fun to see. And, and certainly, you know, we've talked about, uh, a number of, of top athletes, a number of top recruits, not only Division One but two and three throughout, throughout South Jersey. So it's certainly fun to see uh, these kids kind of root for one another and also fun to see where a lot of these kids end up because, as you mentioned, we cover them in high school and then so many of them go on to do great things in college. But, you know, the name of the game, obviously, is getting that education. So if you get some of that paid for, um, that's obviously a win-win for everybody. Mike, we know you got a busy day, a busy weekend with some more basketball games, so we'll let you get to it. Grab your cup of coffee and your power bar and get to work, buddy. <laughs> my first cup of coffee. This is probably my third cup of coffee, <laughs> Sully, but yes, uh, I keep the caffeine train rolling. Yeah, it's, it's a busy high school basketball weekend still. I know a lot of the local teams, their seasons are done, but I'll be heading up to Rutgers tomorrow. There's three South Jersey teams playing for state titles up there, and then uh, Camden Catholic today playing for a state title in Tom's River. So, uh trying to carry the, the banner, carry the torch for South Jersey, some of those teams. We appreciate your work, Mike. Thanks, man. All right, guys. Have a great day. That was Mike Frankel of SNJ Today.